Hello tea friends, welcome to a new series that I'm calling Teaism, a series meant to demystify Chinese tea culture and share the benefits of tea with all who, like me, seek the leaf. I'm Jesse, I'm your host. I lived in China for nine years. I was a Fulbright scholar who apprenticed to a master comedian named Ding Guangquan and performed traditional Chinese comedy. I wrote and performed on Chinese TV shows and performed in over 20 provinces. Tea was my hobby in China and whenever I went to a tea province, I would stick around for a bit to meet the tea farmers and try the teas. Then when COVID hit and I got stuck back in the US, I started making tea videos online with the teas that my tea friends sent me. And then that led to the creation of Jesse's Tea House, this channel, and eventually even an online shop. I wanna tell you who I am so you know who I'm not. I am not a tea master or, and I know this cause I've apprenticed before, an apprentice of a tea master. I'm just a tea guy who speaks Chinese, is curious about tea, has spent a lot of time drinking tea with great people and loves sharing tea and tea culture with my tea friends. And that's you. So let's do it. So I made a couple hundred short videos of over the last two years about Gong Fu Tea. And the number one question is always like, do you have one video where I can just see how everything works? And the answer was always no, because the short videos have a 60 second limit, and then there's the algorithm. Ah. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna take you through the tea table, everything on it, and show you how to do gongfu tea all in one video. This is a tea table, or cha pan in Chinese, that combines the words cha for tea, and pan, which is tray or plate. In English, sometimes they're also called tea trays, and they're basically your home base for making tea. Now, tea trays can vary from smaller sets to larger sets, which can be rectangular or even circular and made of many different materials from bamboo, which is good for being light, durable, and inexpensive to wood, porcelain, or even stone tea tables, which can be painted in various styles or simply be large polished pieces of stone. This blue stone table is the largest we sell on the site, but tea tables are not all about just biggest is best. Think about how you'll actually use the table. So travel tea sets are good for packing and unpacking or having a nice setup that is easily moved. And the stone tables are good if you have a set tea space that you won't be moving from. That's important too, because the stone tables drain from a tube into a bucket beneath the table, while the tray type tables can be empty just by dumping them out afterwards. You can match the size and material of the table to the area that you'll be using to make tea. And don't forget that the style of the table will also impact what sort of tea things look good on the table. I'm gonna use our basic starter set because it has everything you need to get going. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Gong Fu Tea, this is probably the most unusual piece of equipment, the Gai Wan. Uh, the name comes from the word Gai Zi, or lid, and Wan, or bowl. In English, they're kind of called a lidded cup. I go back and forth between using Gai Wan and lidded cup, but both terms are fine. This is your tea making vessel. If you're a fan of Mandarin dramas, you'll recognize these cups and with the palace types kind of just sipping and drinking, drinking straight from the cup. Usually in Gongfu tea, we don't drink directly from the Gai Wan. That sort of thing is more ceremonial. Uh, for instance, when my friend Nora and uh, Kwang Kwang got married in China this past year, they had ceremonial Gai Wans for the tea ceremony at their wedding. I've also gotten a lot of comments on videos asking if you can use a teapot instead of a Gai Wan. Definitely. We actually have a rotating teapot set on the site that is the same size as the travel set, and you can also use porcelain or clay teapots. But if I go into those, we will be here forever. So for now, let's just say you need a tea maker, and for me, it's usually the Gai Wan. Look for a Gai Wan that's not so thick that it's hard to hold, but not so thin that you're gonna burn your fingers super easily. I chose white porcelain for this starter set because it's classic, and it will go with virtually any room you wanna make tea in, or any other table you ever get but you can swap out one Gaiwan for another or even have several of them. I actually keep an extra Gaiwan nearby when I'm having friends over for tea, just because I like to be able to have a second tea and not need to like run and dump the leaves and clean the cup and all that stuff. So we've got our Gaiwan and we're ready to make tea. Before each tea session, rinse everything on your tea table in boiling water. Uh, this not only clears off any dust that might be on the set, it also disinfects the set and it starts to warm up the tea equipment so that it can hold its heat better throughout the steeping process. I never show this step-by-step -step on my videos because I only get 60 seconds in the first place, but this is good to do no matter what at the beginning of every session. If you uh, notice there's anything like crusty or stuck on there or like dried off from a previous tea session, you can also use your tea towel to clean off your cup and then just give it another quick rinse so that we don't have any tea towel flavors on there. Now that your set is clean, let's go ahead and get the tea leaves ready. 
For loose leaf, this is pretty simple, about five to seven grams or between a fourth and fifth of an ounce. This is probably closer to seven grams. Uh, you can use a bit less if you're just making tea for yourself. Um, I used to do that until one day I had this realization that until I sell all the tea in my warehouse, it's actually just mine. So I will never run out of tea ever. And so now I just put in a little bit extra to get that extra flavor out. But you know, don't worry about that. If you're trying to get as many sessions as you can from your tea, you can do five grams and you'll be good. For compressed teas like tea cakes or tea bricks or tea balls, you'll need to break off a piece in order to make it. I might do a video on those later, but for now just realize those are loose leaf teas that are pressed into another shape and they're basically the same as loose leaf. I like displaying my tea on a tea scoop so that I can show them to my guests. Uh, it's definitely optional, but it's a fun way to bring the guests into the tea session and when you get good leaves, it's fun to just look at them. If you want me to do a video later of what I look for in dry tea leaves, let me know, put it in a comment in the video. For now, we're just gonna add these to the lidded cup. This is our white dew white tea. So remember how we warmed up the lidded cup with boiling water to clean it? There's actually enough residual heat still in here that uh, we can get some fragrance out of the tea. When I went to Wangfu Tea House in Beijing, I loved how they would just add the leaves, shake the gaiwan, and then offer the lid or even the whole gaiwan to guests so they could get a bit of the fragrance. So, oh, it's really nice. If you're noticing, a big theme of Gongfu Tea is being good to your guests and bringing them into the tea making process. But even if I'm just by myself, I definitely will still give the tea a sniff because uh, you know, you're a guest at your own tea session too. So when making gongfu tea, the first steep is actually a wash. Uh, the Chinese call this xi cha, or washing the tea, literally washing the tea. It's not because the tea is dirty, it's just because when the leaves are dry, they're not opened up yet. So the first wash opens up the flavor of the tea. The, also, the first couple seconds worth of tea is usually lighter in color and also lighter in flavor. So it's not quite as good as what's coming up next. So we don't drink the wash, but we do put it to good use. And we fill our guest cup first, always fill your guest cup up first. This is just one last chance to rinse off their cup if there was any sort of, uh, you know, dust or anything in there. And then we don't waste it, we give it to the tea pets. I'll talk to you more about them later. Jesse, you're getting a call. What? The fuck calling me the phone. Who's calling? CSR. Oh, <laughs> it's the whole internet. They want to hear about the tea pets now. So tea pets are a real thing. They live on the tea table and you raise them over time by pouring tea over them. Someone commented on a video once and asked if the tea pets were optional. And I said that they're optional in the same way enjoying life is optional. You don't have to do it. Tea pets go back a thousand years. They originated from potters who had extra bits of clay for making teapots and they would shape them into little animals and pop them in the kiln. There's no strict rules for what can be a tea pet. It's 100% a chance for you to express your own creativity. I know some people who keep a rock as a tea pet and my friend Wu Kai in China has tea pets that are so finely made, they're literally works of art that sell for tens of thousands of dollars. Tea pets also bring luck and auspiciousness. In Chinese superstition, like creates like which means that when you pour tea over a tea pet, you get karma of whatever the properties that tea pet has. So pouring tea over my deer Xander might bring calmness and serenity, and pouring over my puffer fish Big Puff might be more likely to get me passed around a circle of adolescent dolphins for a quick high, or something like that, which would be weird. That would be weird. Let's not think about that. Anyway, the tea pets live on the tea table, and since we're going to pour the tea wash out anyways, we just give it to them. And that brings us back to the wash. So one quick note on the wash. Uh, I personally wash all my teas except my green teas because for green teas, you only get three to five good steeps anyway. And honestly, anything I drink and therefore anything that's on my shop, it's gonna be good enough that the quality of the first steep won't be bad. Also, the first steep washes out a fair bit of caffeine. So if you're just drinking at night or you're sensitive to caffeine, you can even do two wash steeps and get even more of the caffeine out. And I suppose if you just want to get going now, you can drink that first deep too and you'll get extra caffeine. So after the wash steep, the tea fumes in the cup and the pitcher are actually bursting with the fresh tea aroma. This is another chance to offer your guests a sniff of the, of the pitcher, of the cups, or the lid of the gaiwan. Uh, Louis, move over here. Try the, try the fumes, that tea fumes. What do you think? Is it good? Very good. Oh, it's so good. Now we're ready to use the filter and the pitcher together. Uh, the filter known as a cha lo is placed on top of the pitcher. 
And now comes the trickiest part of things. Once you've added your water, don't fill it up too high because it's easy to burn your fingers. You want to grasp the lidded cup between your thumb and your middle and uh, your ring finger and then leave a space here between the lid of the lidded cup and the edge and then just pour the whole thing through that space into the filter. I like to give this little uh, circular pattern so that the steam doesn't burn your palm coming up. The filter will catch any stray leaves and you should be left with clean, beautiful tea in your pitcher. Look at that. Very pretty. Love it. So this pitcher might be the most important piece of tea making equipment in the entire set. Hear me out, not kidding. So when I was in Beijing this summer, I went to the beautiful Wanghu Chalo, the uh, Wangfu Tea House, and I got to sit with Li Zong, who is the manager. And I asked her what the most important thing for people is starting with tea. And she said, this is really different from the Western tea making style where people use these huge teapots and make a lot of tea at once. That's convenient, but it also means that the tea just sits at the bottom of the brewing vessel until it gets drunk. Meanwhile, it's oversteeping and getting cold, and the result is that you have bad tea coming out of that tea spout. The pitcher actually does a couple things for you. One, it gets all the water out of your brewing vessel so that you don't oversteep and get bitter tea and waste all the tea energy. It also means that you always have hot tea ready because basically once you have this and you serve at the same time, we've basically used up all of the tea. There's a little bit extra left here. If we want to toss that out on the tea pets afterwards, it's not a big problem, just more tea for the tea pets. This pitcher known as the Gong Dao Bei or the Fairness Pitcher solves all of those issues at once. Uh, the name is actually also worth diving into. Gong Dao means fairness, Bei means cup. So the idea here is that once you make the tea, we all get served from the same pitcher in a fair way. It's a very egalitarian way of making tea, especially from a society where status is super important. To make the statement that around the tea table, while we may show respect by pouring for some people before others, we're all gonna be drinking the same tea and all the guests will enjoy the same tea. There we go. Ah, real good. Let's do it again and show you from the top. So steep the tea. How long and what temperature to steep your tea is part art and part science. Uh, more tea means shorter steep time. More heat means shorter steep time. More water means longer steep time. And each of the six different types of Chinese tea will have different times in general. There's no way to cover steep times and temperatures for every single tea in the world here, but I do have cards that come with every one of my teas and those can be a baseline for some experimentation. And you should experiment because your own taste is the most important. So now that we have our tea, there we go. We have our tea. Pour first for your guests. If they already have tea in their cup, you can top them off. Pour next for yourself and enjoy. Great cup of tea. Ah, it's really good. The white tea is really sweet and very easy drinking. So this is definitely a good one for those people who don't want anything that crazy, good, easy, sweet drinking tea. And now we're at my favorite part of the tea session. We just keep doing it. Make tea for your friends, make tea for yourself. Enjoy your tea time with your friends or just with yourself if you're by yourself. So on my site, I don't like to use the word servings. I use the word sessions because one session's worth of tea is able to make tea for several people over the whole of this tea session. I mean, this tea can be received 10, 15 times in this size lidded cup. So that's way more than one mug's worth. And also don't feel pressure to drink all the steeps. Enjoy as much as you want. No one's counting. So once you're finished, cleaning up properly will make your set last longer. Firstly, throw out the tea leaves. If you know about composting or any stuff like that, even better. I'm not an expert in that, but if you are, great. You can, and this is not traditional, but I have heard people on a Discord server do this a lot. They take the leaves and then you can cold brew them overnight to get the rest of the tea energy out and get even more value out of the good tea leaves. So rinse off your tea equipment, but do not use soap. There's no need to use soap. Uh, we will be doing a boiling water wash the next time we make tea, and we don't want any soap residue on the cups. You don't even want to be thinking about whether your tea may have soap flavor in it because it'll mess with your head. 
Also, there are some types of tea making material like clay pots are porous and they're gonna absorb the flavors of the soap. So as Confucius said, no bueno. For the tray, dump out the spill and then rinse off the board and then dry the board so it dries evenly. Uneven drying can lead to the board warping or cracking. You can also rub the board with mineral oil to increase its resistance to warping. Also, if you have any issues with any of the things on our travel set, you can email tfriendsupport at jessiecehouse.com. We have extra parts of all of these just in case any of them break in shipping. The replacement is free. If you drop one, we'll charge you a little bit for it. We don't make money on that, but the point is just like, we don't want you ruining your whole set because you lost one piece. The bottom of these trays will get dirty. I personally don't think it's worth the effort to keep the bottom clean, but keeping the top in good shape is important. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to the end, I'm sure you're like me where, you know, tea has really, something about tea has reached you. As you can see, the tea for me has really changed my life, not just as a hobby, but as also a way to keep up with friends, meet new friends, hello, internet people, all our different shots, and just approach life more mindfully. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ring the bell, and check out my new podcast that's just been released. The link is in the description. That's a really fun show, and I think you guys will enjoy it. And of course, the best way to support the channel and also yourself is to go to the website and try some of the tea. All of the tea sets and teas and tea equipment and tea pets that you saw in this is all on the website. We have them in the US, in our warehouse, and they ship out within two days, jessiesteahouse.com. Please leave comments about whatever you'd like to see in future episodes of Teaism. Uh, thank you again to our farmers, to all our tea members, and to everybody who made this possible. I'm Jesse, I'll see you next episode.